Hey everyone, Josh here from Bricktown. Thanks for stopping by and welcome to the first episode of the Bricktown Bulletin. Uh, in this series, I will be using this for sort of like a uh, updating channel news, upcoming episodes and podcasts and things like that. I may also take the time to um, talk about something from that day that sparked my interest or uh, something I feel that uh, should be talked about or something that I have an opinion on that I feel comfortable talking about. Um, so with that being said, um, upcoming stuff for the Bricktown Media channel. Um, I do have, uh, as of yesterday, I recorded a six and three quarter, almost seven hour conversation with a friend of mine. Um, my friend's name is Tiago. Uh, we go back, uh, back to high school, known him for a long time. Um, we don't always see eye to eye on certain things. And, um, but we've been really good friends and we do have the ability, the ability to communicate, you know, pretty, uh, safely without, you know, ruining a friendship. So, um, we did, uh, get together a couple days ago, recorded a over six hour conversation, and, uh, that will be slowly making its way up onto the channel in the next few days. Um, I'm suspecting probably perhaps hour long episodes and then like a 40 minute finale or, you know, a 40 minute first episode and then hour long episodes up and after that. Um, I could break them up into half hours, but I worry that there really isn't much traction taken in a half hour of conversation. So, so we'll see. But yeah, I'm, I'm suspecting probably close to about four or five hour long uh, podcast coming up for the open for discussion uh, episodes channel show. Um, other than that, of course, we've got more gameplay coming up. I'm still playing Kerbal. Um, I'm still playing Kerbal, and I am playing Grand Theft Auto and Ark Survival Evolved. Of course, I still have a creative quick cut uh, mini series that I've been working on. Just put out three episodes today, actually. Um, pretty uh, pretty busy today, so that's good. But I definitely have some more uh, more episodes for that coming up. Uh, these were about three, four, five minute episodes. Um, based on the fact that I kind of messed up my audio recording. So, um, I have one more to post, and then that series will be over. The mini-series will be over, and then I'll go back to posting, like, 10, 15, 20-minute episodes about the, uh, the base, the epic base build that I have going on in creative mode for ARC. Um, other than that... Oh, uh, other than that, I also had to download ARC <laughs> Survival Evolved the Xbox edition, because uh, about two months after I built my computer and rebought Arc, uh, Microsoft decided to go ahead and do a uh, crossplay or wildcard to do wildcard. Either way, it was about a month after I got my computer going that, or maybe two, that I had to. Uh, so I, I bought Steam game version, and now I have the also downloaded the Xbox version. Um, but that allows me to do crossplay, and I don't think I've actually, I may have record, I might have some footage recorded, but not working yet, so um, definitely though, in the future, either in the very near future, or in the next couple of weeks, um, expect some footage and episodes from Art Crossplay, it'll be me and my friend uh, Will, my best friend roommate, he lives in the room over there, um, he has an Xbox, and I got a PC, and we, um, we did play together for a good couple hours, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I recorded all of that, so that should be coming up very soon. Um, but super exciting to be able to play ARC on a PC with someone who's on Xbox. I don't know. I just think that's, it's, just, it's about time. And, you know, maybe someday we'll have PlayStation and Xbox and PC. Everyone getting together in a big old gang bang of video game and video game gang bang. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> uh, so I think that's pretty much it for channel news. Um, yeah, more podcasts, more gameplay. Um, and just more content in general. Um, I'm trying to maybe work on some uh, group projects or, I don't know, local collaborations with friends, maybe get together and do some sort of uh, short film. I don't know. I want to I want to tra tread in the water of, of, of film editing. I want to see what I can do with it. And I have a lot of uh, very intelligent, smart, uh, and funny, talented friends. So, um, yeah, so we'll see. So with that, um, I, next up is this episode of Bricktown Bulletin, the very first flagship episode. Uh, I am going. I do have a topic that I'd like to talk about. Something I saw today online on the Facebook uh, social media interweb sphere, and instantaneously, as soon as I saw the headline, I knew that it was going to be something that I was going to be interested in. 
So, uh, that particular topic today, <clears throat> pardon me, is uh, artificial kidneys. Holy crap. So, um, actually, I'm unprepared uh, because I didn't um, previously open the um, um, and right about there we go. So I will <clears throat> read some excerpts. I believe I want to go to page one first. So this is off of Troab, which I don't know if I'm saying that right. Troab, T R O A B dot com. Um, and the title of the article is World's First Bionic Kidney is All Set to Replace Dialysis in Just Two Years. Now, that alone was enough to either be extremely well thought out clickbait for a very unique niche of people, <clears throat> or um, it was groundbreaking science that I was about to read about. So I was very excited about that. I do love groundbreaking science. So, um, the bionic kidney can be inserted through common surgery. It doesn't take anything special or, or uh, unique or uh, too involved or too dangerous, too invasive. Um, technology behind the device, the main technology behind the bionic kidney is a microchip made by silicon nanotechnology, a process that is similar to microelectronics used in computers. The microchips are affordable and act as good filters. Who would have thought that microchips stacked together would be a, an effective or efficient filter? That, that's crazy. That's pretty awesome. Um, each device will have about 15 microchips built in layers and will act as a scaffold that holds living renal cells which will grow in and around the microchip filters. These cells will mimic the activity of a live kidney. Now that's pretty amazing. Now, you, we've already seen examples uh, already today of them using a sort of scaffold technology where if they're going to graft skin, they'd start with a collagen sort of scaffold. They would then put on the skin cells to be grown on that scaffold. And then in a few days, you would have a piece of skin exactly the shape and form of that scaffold. They can do the exact same thing with someone's nose. They can make a scaffold out of 3D printing out of the uh, collagen material. They can make... Um, 3D printed scaffold and then dip that in the solution of the stem cells and then in like a week or half a week or two weeks or something like that, you've got a, a nose. I mean, it, it's obviously not attached and doesn't have nerves and it's not necessarily functioning. Um, and you could theoretically put it on someone who needed a nose and uh, again, it wouldn't smell, I don't think. Because I'm pretty sure you'd have to wire that all together. But uh, at least um, visually speaking, you know, they'd have a nose, and that would be more acceptable, I suppose. So uh, so that's pretty amazing um, that they can do this. And I, I worked in the fringes of the medical industry for a little while, for a couple years, um, as a chair cart driver. So I would uh, deliver patients and the elderly to their doctor's appointments, or, you know, I'd bring grandma to the uh, graduation party or something like that. But they'd be in a wheelchair, they can't really walk, so I'd be the one to pick them up in the van, bring them up on the lift... Uh, tie them down to the back of the van and then drive them safely to and fro. Uh, <clears throat> but a lot of my patients um, were dialysis patients. The way it works, it's once you have kidney failure, you're on dialysis, uh, generally speaking, for the rest of your life. Now, there are some rare cases where a person needs dialysis, but it's a temporary thing, and eventually their kidney can catch up and continue its, its uh, important work. Um, but the... But yeah, so but dialysis, it, it basically it means that your kidney can no longer clean out all of the toxins that your body naturally produces through what you eat and breathe and drink. Um, it cannot clean those or scrub those uh, toxins from your blood. And so that's just traveling around your system and that's just no good. It makes you very unhealthy uh, to the point where you can die. Kidney failure, you're dead. So dialysis is an every other day process for about three and a half to four hours every single time where you sit down in a chair and they tie your... You've got a tube cost, uh, permanently inserted into your arm and uh, a direct line into your veins, basically. And what this machine does is you sit down in this little recliner and for the next three and a half, four hours, it slowly draws the blood out of your body, sends it through their system of tubes and filters and compressors and whatnots and refreshers, things that maybe add oxygen, oxygenators into the blood. And then it's pumped back in through the system, back uh, in through another tube into the, your, your blood cir uh, circulatory system. So this is an amazing technology in itself, and it saved countless lives. Um, well, I, I don't know if I can say saved, because I think in general it's more of a, a, um, 
a maintaining sort of thing. It doesn't actually cure renal failure. It doesn't, it, it, like, again, generally speaking, you're on it for the rest of your life. It is a, a keep up. Uh, I can't think of the word, but um, either way, uh, it is a great technology, but it, it's lacking. And a lot of people end up, you know, even just after a four hour session, session of them literally just sitting down, they give them something to eat, they get to watch TV or nap or listen to music, read a book, do a crossword. But uh, after that four hours, they're exhausted. They have they have no energy left because of everything their body did, they uh, just had to go through. So while dialysis is in itself a godsend and uh, a miracle of modern uh, medical technology, it's just it's not enough anymore. And more and more and more people, based on our societal you know diet and outlook toward diet and things like that, uh, which would of course directly affect uh, your kidneys, um, renal failure is uh, just you know. It's kidney and liver failure, by the way, is, is when you'd have to be in dialysis. Either way, it's 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 happening. It's more and more. It's very common. You probably know someone or know someone who knows someone who's on dialysis. Um, so this kidney situation, if now they say it's going to be ready in two years, um, I would I would venture to say anywhere for probably two to five years. Um, but if this it has zero rejection because this isn't necessarily a biological thing where you're getting a kidney from someone else. Um, there's always a chance where your body might see that kidney as a invasive intruder and it would just attack it and it would fail again uh, and it would be no good. So this being a completely mechanical device um, has no rejection. So it just gets, you know, plumbed into your system, booted up, turned on, and uh, apparently, I would imagine, you're good to go. Um, you know, maybe a few days in, for recuperation in the hospital, but it doesn't look like a very large device at all. Um, you'll see the picture right here, right now, that shows um, a guy just holding it in his hand. That's the whole thing? That's, that's impressive. Uh, yeah, you can even see the diagram here um, that it's right down here tucked in. It's amazing. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to share that. I saw that today, and I was instant, instantaneously drawn to talk about it, and that hasn't happened yet for me. Um, as much as I am diving into this YouTube creator, digital maker kind of world, and just seeing what I can do and how to do it, um, I hadn't really, I hadn't really considered much. Um, well, obviously podcasting, yes, but not so much on my own or vlogging. I, I'm not a huge fan of being in front of the camera. Um, I, I'm not comfortable necessarily. I could learn to get used to it. I think. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to do this, take this opportunity, um, plus to have another reason to have something to edit, something to publish. Um, yeah, the Bricktown Bulletin. It's going to be at least weekly. It might be more often. Again, depends on the day. Um, this, again, is probably going to be considered a vlog for this channel of mine, for me. Um, I can't promise it's always going to be about my life and my deal because I don't really have much going on except this. It's kind of what I'm doing right now, so... But um, things that I'm interested in, movies I want to see maybe, just general commentary. Um, so, yeah, look forward to more episodes coming up. And uh, thank you very much for hanging out, stopping by, like, comment, sub, all that YouTube jazz. All right, guys, thank you very much. Have a good night.